now that you know what a programmer is and what programming is and users are, what exactly enables you to program? Well, it's your computer, right? So it's a computing device, something that takes those those uh, language statements and converts it into the machine code, which then executes and does something. Well, in today's section, we're going to talk about what makes the basic components of, of a computer, of a computing device that does and executes um, for these these different types of languages. Um, and And so let's get started on on how to do that. Okay, so what I've got here is um, actually a, a live uh, video of, of a computing device. Um, this is actually a uh, an old um, desktop kind of computer. It's a an all-in-one type computer. Um, and, and what I wanted to do is just kind of show you the different components that that are kind of a part of this. Um, and so let's start here with with this guy right here. Um, this right here is is the hard drive. Um, and this is where kind of like all the data is stored. We have over here um, your your audio inputs and outputs um, that's in there. You can see right here, hopefully it focuses. Um, we've got some input devices. So here's a, a memory card reader and a USB reader. Hopefully it focuses. Let's bring it out. There we go. It focuses there. Um, this is your RAM right here. So this is your, your random access. Uh, memory that's in there um, and that kind of stores it in there we have some capacitors all along here um, and then here's the the CPU uh, or the central processing unit and the GPU or the graphical uh, processing unit that's in there um, and then finally we have a lot more different types of, of inputs and outputs here we have an HDMI uh, connection right here. We've got a DVI connection right here. Um, we have our network card right here um, and all those types of things. And then finally, on the back right here, it's kind of hard to see. This is actually your, your Wi-Fi card that's in there. So this is actually a, a real, real computing device um, that's here um, and, and that you could use. All, all computers basically look like this. Um, in in some sort of in some sort of way, um, at the most basic level, every computer has a processing unit um, and I/O devices that's in there. And then that processing unit, it's got main memory that's on there, and then it's got other things such as uh, secondary memory um, that's in there. Main memory usually typically resides right on to on the system itself, and there's multiple different um, levels of, of that main memory. So for example, cache, you might hear about cache as a part of the CPU. That cache is, is a section of memory that resides really, really close to the CPU. Um, and the reason why it's there is it's able to take these commands, these ones and zeros, and then um, quickly puts them into the CPU. And it's kind of like a, a buffer in between. When you take one step out further, you've got RAM and and the RAM is usually upgradable. You can make changes to it um, unless you have a Mac, and then uh, that's not usually upgradable anymore, which is kind of sad. Um, it's kind of closer onto the, onto the board on there and soldered onto the board. Um, uh, um, but the RAM is kind of one step out, but it's still considered to be like a main memory. Now, the differences between um, main memory and secondary memory is secondary memory, like your hard drive, is more permanent, meaning that um, after a power power cycle has happened, it'll it'll uh, still retain its memory. But in main memory, if a power cycle happens or um, power is removed, then everything that's inside of that memory is is gone. It's lost. It requires power to be actually electricity to to be generated to maintain the contents of that memory. And then finally, you've got some some I/O devices um, such as your networking, um, your keyboard, your mouse, your printers, your displays, and technically secondary memory is also a, a, an I.O. device as well um, that's in there. 
So your processing unit is tasked with executing specific instructions. Um, it, it's at its core, it has a fetch, decode, and then execute. Um, and, and it has very basic instruction sets. So you can do an add, it can do a shift, it can do moves, um, but it's, it's very, very um, uh, basic commands in there, but it does it really, really fast. And, and again, we talked a little bit about uh, machine code. Well, machine code is really the translation into ones and zeros. So a, a CPU at its very most basic level is just a bunch of transistors or on and off switches. And so it, it uses those on and off switches and it is, has an efficient way of, of doing that with these basic instruction sets. And by doing that, we can then get massive programs that like games or internet browsers or programming languages or, or all sorts of different things that we can do um, with that from just this one few sets of of commands that the processing unit does. So the processor is tasked with executing specific instructions. Main memory. So that's used to store information for quick access. Um, again, cache is quicker and closer to the CPU um, than RAM, and RAM is going to be faster than your permanent storage devices. Um, the big difference between RAM and permanent storage or secondary uh, memory is that it loses its data following a, a power cycle. So it's it's important to, to remember that. Um, so RAM usually is really fast, but it doesn't last for, for as long, um, meaning that after the power is gone, it, the data is gone. Secondary memory or, or permanent storage, however, is, is, is able to do that. Um, you have the, an example here where this is a, a spinning disk hard drive, where the disk actually spins around um, and, and sets the, the data inside of there. It actually magnetizes the disk itself and creates these almost like indentations inside of there, which indicates the ones and zeros and how it does that. And you have this little reader that moves back and forth along that way. And that's how it stores that data. SSDs um, or, or solid state drives, they, they actually don't have a spinning disk inside of them. They're just a single just kind of state inside of there. Um, but, but they have um, these... Uh, the ability to set those ones and zeros in there. And then once you remove them, they still are able to retain, retain that, that memory that's in there. Um, finally, we have input and output um, devices. So these inputs and outputs could be just about anything um, that you think about it. Your keyboard, your mouse, your network, your speakers, your display. It could even be anything like your VR system or projectors or even your Wi-Fi network. The little scanners that, that they have when you check out the little lasers that do that, that's that's an input device. So kind of just think about all of all of those types of things. Everything that you do, everything that you work with today, most likely has some sort of computing device behind it. And you don't even really realize that. That's that's kind of a, a neat neat thing, I think. Um, and so there you have it. That, that's kind of the basic components of what a, a computing device has and does and, and how that, that operates.